The Megazyme Phytic Acid Kit is specific for the measurement of phosphorus released from phytic acid and myoinositol phosphates by the enzymes phytase and alkaline phosphatase. The kit will provide 50 assays and contains the following. One instruction manual, buffer one, phytase suspension, buffer three, alkaline phosphatase suspension, phosphorus standard solution, and oat flour control powder. The principle of the Megazyme Phytic Acid Assay Procedure is shown in this slide. The procedure is comprised of three stages. In the first stage, phytic acid is extracted from samples using 0.66 molar hydrochloric acid. The second stage is the enzymatic dephosphorylation reaction in which phytase hydrolyzes phytic acid to produce myoinositol phosphates and inorganic phosphate. Then alkaline phosphatase further hydrolyzes myoinositol phosphates to myoinositol and inorganic phosphate. In the final stage, the colorimetric determination of phosphorus, inorganic phosphate and ammonium molybdate react to form 12 molybdophosphoric acid, which is reduced under acidic conditions to molybdenum blue. The amount of molybdenum blue formed is proportional to the amount of inorganic phosphate present in the sample and is measured by the increase in absorbance at 655 nanometers. Inorganic phosphate is quantified as the total phosphorus using a calibration curve generated from phosphorus standards. The subsequent calculation of phytic acid content requires the assumption that phosphorus is exclusively released from phytic acid. The phytic acid assay procedure requires some general chemicals that are not supplied with the kit. These are trichloroacetic acid, hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide and the colour reagent. The preparation procedures for these reagents are detailed in the kit booklet. However, here we will show the preparation of the colour reagent which also requires the preparation of solutions A and B. To prepare solution A, add 10 grams of ascorbic acid to approximately 90 millilitres of distilled water, then stir until dissolved. Once the ascorbic acid has dissolved, transfer the solution to a 100 millilitre volumetric flask. Then add 5.35 millilitres of sulfuric acid and make to a total volume of 100 millilitres with distilled water. Mix the solution thoroughly and transfer to a Duran bottle. This is solution A and is stable for one week when refrigerated. To prepare solution B, add 1.25 grams of ammonium molybdate to approximately 20 millilitres of distilled water in a 25 millilitre volumetric flask. Make to a total volume of 25 millilitres and mix thoroughly until dissolved. Once dissolved, transfer the solution to a polypropylene tube. This is solution B and is stable for one month when refrigerated.
prepare the colour reagent, it is essential that solution B is added to solution A, and that this is done in a ratio of one part solution B to five parts of solution A. First add solution A, then add solution B, and mix thoroughly. This is a colour reagent and must be paired, prepared fresh on the day. For each batch of samples that are applied to the colorimetric determination of phosphorus, the phosphorus calibration curve must be performed concurrently using the same batch of colour reagent. The phosphorus standards are prepared from the phosphorus standard solution that is supplied with the kit using the volume shown in this table. These solutions are stable for one week when refrigerated. Accurately weigh approximately one gram of sample material into a glass beaker. Then add 20 millilitres of 0.66 molar hydrochloric acid. Cover the beaker with foil and stir vigorously for a minimum of three hours at room temperature. Alternatively, this extraction can be performed overnight for convenience. Once the extraction is complete, transfer one milliliter of sample extracts to microfuse tubes. Centrifuge the extracts at 13,000 RPM for approximately 10 minutes. After centrifugation, immediately transfer 0.5 millilitres of the sample extract supernatants to fresh microfuse tubes. Neutralise each sample by the addition of 0.5 millilitres of 0.75 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Neutralised sample extract supernatants are then used in the enzymatic dephosphorylation reaction step. In the enzymatic dephosphorylation step, each extracted sample is applied to two reactions, a free phosphorus reaction and a total phosphorus reaction as shown in this table. To the free phosphorus tube add 0.62 millilitres of distilled water. To the total phosphorus reaction tube add 0.6 millilitres of distilled water. Then add 0.2 millilitres of solution 1 to both reaction tubes.
Then add 0.05 milliliters of sample extract to both tubes. Then add 0.02 milliliters of suspension 2 phytase only to the total phosphorus tube. Mix both reaction tubes by vortex and incubate in a, in a water bath set at 40 degrees Celsius for at least 10 minutes. After 10 minute incubation, add 0.02 milliliters of distilled water only to the free phosphorus reaction tube. Then add 0.2 milliliters of solution 3 to both reaction tubes. Then add 0.02 milliliters of suspension fold alkaline phosphatase only to the total phosphorus reaction tube. Mix the reaction tubes by vortex and incubate in a water bath set at 40 degrees Celsius for at least 15 minutes. After the 15 minute incubation, add 0.3 milliliters of trichloroacetic acid to both reaction tubes. Mix the tubes by inversion and centrifuge at 13,000 RPM for 10 minutes. After centrifugation, it is essential that the solutions in the microfuse tubes are not mixed but carefully and accurately pipette one milliliter of the supernatant into fresh microfuse tubes for the colorimetric determination step. Add 0.5 milliliters of color reagent to one milliliter of the free phosphorus and total phosphorus samples. In addition to this, add 0.5 milliliters of color reagent to one milliliter of each of the phosphorus standards zero to four as prepared in the preparation of the phosphorus calibration curve table. Mix each of the tubes by vortex and incubate in a water bath set at 40 degrees Celsius for approximately one hour.
After the one hour incubation, mix each solution by vortex and then transfer at least one milliliter to semi micro cuvettes. Here is an example of the colour development using the phosphorus standards. Samples with higher levels of phosphorus will show a higher degree of blue coloration. Calculation of phosphorus or phytic acid content using the phytic acid kit is performed as described in the calculation section in the kit booklet. Alternatively, a megacalc application for this kit is available from the Megazyme website. This is an Excel-based spreadsheet that allows simple and reliable results analysis of raw data. The first worksheet of the MegaCalc application shows the instruction page that details how to fill out the MegaCalc worksheet. To perform results analysis, open the MegaCalc worksheet, input the sample details of the experiment, then input the absorbance values of the phosphorus standards. Then input the sample identifiers for the test samples, followed by the absorbance values for free phosphorus and total phosphorus. If a sample weight other than one gram has been used, input the appropriate sample weight. Similarly, if an extraction volume other than 20 mils has been used, input the appropriate extraction volume. Once all data has been entered into the spreadsheet, sample results are automatically calculated for phosphorus in grams per 100 grams and phytic acid in grams per 100 grams. This can then be printed or saved electronically.